Last part, the young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will you try that? The fright, the young and the old. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. And now we go back to the easy part. Continuing. We come to your feet. very singable, very predictable. So when we get to that point in the uh, presentation of the gifts, please sing along in, uh, with a refrain. Everybody's lined up. So once again, good morning. Welcome to Mary, Queen of Peace Parish, as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. A special welcome is extended to those who are visiting with us today and to anyone returning home to our parish community. You are always welcome here. We have some announcements this weekend and the details of all our announcements may be found in the bulletin and online. Assisting us today as our lectors are Lucy Barone, Irene Hearn, Richard Patton, and Julie Shepard. Our altar servers are Kelly Vates and Lenny Finkbinder. Our interpreter is Diana Saunders Conley. I am your cantor, Christine Jordanov. Our organist is Bill Brinzer. Our celebrants are Father Michael Stump, our pastor, and our special guest today, Bishop David Zubik. Please remain seated throughout the entire Mass so that the interpreter may be seen. Please join with each other in singing our opening hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell, number 853 in the hymnal.
I guess I'm supposed to welcome you, right? Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> a special welcome to Bishop Zubik and to Erica, his Master of Ceremonies, as we're celebrating this third Sunday of Easter. A number of people asked me, why is the bishop coming? And I'll tell you, this comes out of a conversation he and I were having about our parish community and about the integration of both the speaking and the deaf community. And I said, Bishop, the best way for you to understand it is to come experience. And so, welcome to the experience, Bishop Zubik. So Father Michael, thank you. Um, you know, Father Michael is my birthday brother. We were born uh, on the same day. Not the same year, but the same day. So every time that I see him, he's a little bit older than I am. <laughs> but uh, every time I see him, I say, how's my birthday brother doing? And uh, I'm so blessed to have him as a brother, and I know you're so blessed to have him as a pastor. So let's see how well he taught me to do peace be with you. Let's see if I do this right. Is that okay? Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, let us humbly ask the Lord our God to bless this water which he has created, which will be sprinkled on us in memory of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit that we have received. Lord, our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Generously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your, of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our sisters and brothers who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Born of God's breath, this all 
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Our responsorial is number 1068 in the blue hymnals. A reading from the letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place along the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, Father Mike will, uh, shared the question. So, so why am I coming here today? You know, and my answer is because I, because I love you. Seriously. You know, as, as pastor of the Church of Pittsburgh, I, I love to go to all of our parishes. And especially today, I want to be with all of you and especially with the members of the deaf community who have made such a, a beautiful, positive impact on our church for, for many years, for many decades. And I'm so grateful for all the people who really have supported the ministry to the deaf community because we all owe you a debt of great gratitude. And so thanks for all the ways in which you show your love for me, and I hope that today we can feel uh, our love for each other. So uh, my guess is that uh, uh, all of us, every single one of us, will remember some significant birthday in our lives. Maybe it was a, a very happy occasion or maybe one that wasn't so happy. Or maybe it was one of those milestone birthdays, how turning 30 or 40 or 50 or 65 or 75 or 100. I'd like you to think for a moment about when that birthday was for you and why. Well, 
Well, I got to tell you that uh, one of those memorable birthdays uh, for me was my number seven. Okay, in 1956, way back in the ancient days, huh? And I can remember it for a number of occasions. First of all, because it was the day after Labor Day. It was the first day of school, and we only had a half a day of school. It was a memorable birthday because my dad, who uh, worked for the A&P supermarket, was always off on Tuesday, and so he would be coming to pick me up after school so I wouldn't have to take the bus. I also remember it well because the day before my birthday, on Labor Day, my grandma had given me some money, and I was so distracted that first half day of school because I wanted to take that money, go down to Saul's Sporting Goods Store on Merchant Street in Ambridge and buy a baseball glove that I had my eye on. And so the whole time, the, from 8.30 until 11.30 when we were dismissed, even though Sister Lucine was introducing herself to us and telling us what was going to happen in the second grade, I didn't hear a word she said because I was thinking about that baseball glove. And after school uh, concluded and I ran down the steps, my dad was there parked at the side of the curb. I hopped in the car and I said, Dad, come on, we got to go down to Saul's to, to buy that baseball glove that Grandma gave me money for yesterday. My dad didn't say a word. And as he started to drive the car, it was clear he was not going to Merchant Street, okay? He was going to, to our home, which was about five miles away. And, you know, I kept on saying, Dad, turn around. Let's go to, the, to, to Saul's to get the baseball glove. And, and he didn't say a word. And we continued to go on to where our home was. And by the time we got into our driveway, you know, I had had enough. And I uh, was very sassy. And I let my dad know on how unhappy I was. And so I got out of the car, I slammed the co door of the car. We went into the garage, opened up the cellar door, and the cellar was filled with all of my friends from the neighborhood and my aunts and uncles and cousins. And when I opened the door, I was stunned. I was surprised when they said, happy birthday, surprise. And um, I was embarrassed because they all heard me how sassy I was with my dad. And I remember that well, but, you know, I remember it because it was such a surprise. And guess what? What was at the party? The baseball glove was already there. So, you know, I, I thought about that experience today uh, because I wanted to try to imagine how the apostles felt when Jesus came to meet them after the resurrection. And, you know, I, I could identify with them because I suspect that in the several times where Jesus comes to meet the apostles, they were as embarrassed then as I was later about my behavior. You know, think about that for a moment. The apostles had been with Jesus for three years. They were with him on Holy Thursday night. They kind of hid under bushel baskets on Good Friday, and they were each separately and together trying to figure out what in the heck happened. And did we just waste three years of our lives? How could we have believed in him after everything that, that he told us? And now we see it all went down the drain. Some of them were angry, some were frightened. All of them were lonely, and all of them were confused. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus comes, as we hear today from the gospel writer Luke. He stuns them. He surprises them. And not only by being before them, but what all of my friends and relatives would do later on, he was there because he loved them. And it didn't matter a thing to Jesus about the negative feelings that the apostles were having in those days since Holy Thursday. Didn't bother Jesus in the least that some of those apostles were questioning why did they commit themselves to the Lord. What he cared most about was to love them, to surprise them with his love so that they would always remember 
that moment just as you and I remember significant birthdays in our lives. And you know, so as I'm thinking about what you and I are listening to today on this, the third Sunday of Easter, the thing that's uppermost in my mind, what I'm hearing Jesus tell me, and maybe he wants to tell you the same thing through me, is that if we are like those early apostles, isn't it incumbent on us to take a look at how you and I can surprise other people, even stun other people by our behavior? I have a good friend, a uh, priest friend, uh, who I made friends when I was bishop in, in Green Bay, and he's a priest of the Diocese of Green Bay. And every Sunday, he uses his talent as a poet to help people understand the message. And, and so the, the one that he's written for this Sunday really kind of touched my heart. He said, you know, we need to receive the power of God's grace to stun other people, to show them how freely we are to give, or how often we are to care, or how genuinely we're willing to forgive or how indiscriminately we welcome each other. And you know, I think it's important for us as we celebrate Easter today that what we celebrate, we don't leave behind here. Because Jesus meets you and me the same way he met those apostles. Some of us in church today uh, are frightened about something in life like those apostles were. And some of us here in church today are lonely, feeling like nobody cares. Maybe some of us are angry about something we've experienced in life or we're experiencing now. And, and maybe there are lots of us who are confused about a whole lot of things. And Jesus is here as he was for the apostles. And he is here to surprise us to let us know in no uncertain terms how much he loves you and me. And that's why I'm here, to be a visible sign of that love to all of you. So let's maybe respond to the power of God's word and the great gift that we're going to receive from the altar, the body and blood, soul and divinity of the Lord Jesus, and determine that somewhere along the line, either today or sometime this week, we're going to surprise somebody. We're going to stun them by how we share or how we care or how we forgive or how we welcome. And if we're willing to do that, really honest to God, with the power of God's grace, then we can truly call ourselves what Jesus calls us to be, Easter people. And so now I invite you to stand with me as we proudly profess, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a slow learner, huh? Everybody please be seated. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. So let's now proudly profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. We stand to learn so much from Jesus. And one of the things that's so important is that we know how to pray, how we know how to connect to God our Father and to trust in him. And so we do so now as we lift up our every prayer to him, knowing that he listens to us carefully and trusting that he will answer us lovingly. Our response is, risen Jesus, hear us. For Pope Francis, our Bishop David, and all your servant leaders, may God bless them with hearts that are open. We pray, risen the Jesus, Lord, hear, us. hear us. For those who celebrate their first communion this weekend, may Jesus' gift of his body and blood strengthen them on their journey of faith. We pray. Risen, risen Jesus, Jesus hear, us. hear us. For the grace we need, Jesus, to be strong and joyful witnesses of your love and mercy. We pray. Risen, risen Jesus, Jesus, hear us. For all people who are receiving the sacraments for the first time this Easter season, Help them and all of us grow in love for Christ and his church. We pray. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear us. For peace in our world and for all the people who give their lives for peace. We pray. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear us. For our church family at Mary, Queen of Peace, help us to be a church alive with love for our neighbors, we pray. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear us. For those in our parish who have gone home to the Lord this week, especially Teresa Ader Colwicky, Stanley Janiak, Virginia Kufta, and Barbara Stewart, we pray. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear us. We remember Joanne Katevich and all the intentions present on the altar, along with those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Risen, Risen Jesus, Jesus, hear us. Calling on the loving intercession of our patron and mother, we pray. Hail Mary. Full, full of grace, grace the Lord is with, with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Our song for the presentation of the gifts is number 938, We Come to Your Feast.
pray, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. Praise the Lord in his name for our good and the good of all of this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your most unworthy servant, with my brothers, William, William, and Mark, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, especially Paul, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song for communion is number 911, Many and Great.
Let us pray. Sorry. 
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, Bishop Zubik, thank you for bringing your love and the love of Christ among us in the midst of our community of Mary, Queen of Peace. And thank you so much for your presence. Can we give him a little bit of support, please? So, so Bishop, that, that was a quiet clap. And the reason why that was a quiet clap is because the deaf clap like this, and also sometimes you'll hear the rumbling, sometimes they'll pound their feet, right? So that's kind of the, the deaf clap. So uh, extension of an invitation, there is a social, a second Sunday social, right after mass, next door in the cafes. Everyone is welcome, and it's warm enough to open the doors. Thanks be to God, so you can all fit, right? And lastly, um, of course, the conclusion of Mass is go forth in peace, alleluia, alleluia. And you're going to wow the bishop, right, with how you all know the sign, alleluia. But we're going to teach that to the bishop here right now, okay? Right. This, the sign for alleluia is one of the most fun if you can say that, to, to, to sign, right? It's really a sign of celebration. And so your hands come together in front of you open and they clap. And then the hands close with just kind of a little, yeah, kind of a little crook there in your pointer finger. And they spin up like streamers, party streamers. And then you open, right? So it's alleluia, right? Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. See, I leave smarter than I was when I came in, huh? Thank, <laughs> thank you for all of you. So, you know, as I was um, sitting here, as all of you were coming to receive Holy Communion, I, I couldn't help but be inspired by the, the stained glass window, the Great Commission. And, you know, it's best that we never forget what Jesus did for the apostles then and for all of us now. He's commissioning us to go. So uh, let's hear Jesus commission us so that we can give generously, that we can care often, that we can forgive from our hearts, and that we can welcome everybody. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. To each of these three prayers, I ask you to respond with an amen. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God, God. alleluia, alleluia. Our closing song is number 949. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. We'll sing verses one, three, and four. 